Mass Bro Investigation Report Regarding Incident Date of Incident September 25, 2010 Time of Incident 12 o'clock p.m. Location of Incident Beverly Center Mall 8500 Beverly Boulevard Los Angeles CA 90048 Meet the My Little Pony Characters Event Person involved, Catherine Wilson, missing. Person writing the report, Donna Nixon, Hasbro HR Legal. Summary of incident. On Saturday, September 25, 2010, at the Beverly Center in Los Angeles, CA Hasbro Marketing have prepared for a meet and greet of My Little Pony characters and promotion for the October 10, 2000 premiere. Six actors and actress were hired to be in a costume for the event. See attached list. The meet and greet was supposed to last from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. in the afternoon, followed by another event the next day. After the incident, all future events have been canceled. Five of the, of the six main characters exited the dressing room and proceeded to the stage, except for Fluttershy, who was to be played by Catherine Wilson. She was the last to exit the dressing room. Problems arose from the start that included an unusual odor with and the assault of several guests. 911 was called at some point after the actress was ex- escorted from the stage. She was hospitalized shortly thereafter, say Daryl Castle, a witness report. Witness description of incident. On, on Saturday, September 25, 2010, Daryl Castle was tasked with extorting the characters out from their dressing room onto the stage at the Bradley Center Mall. Miss Catherine Wilson, actress hired to play Fluttershy, I was the last to arrive on stage. Already, it was apparent that something was wrong. Miss Wilson appeared to be intoxicated. She was walking in a normal way and was able to travel in a straight line. When asked if she was okay, she merely nodded and proceeded forward. I also noted that her costume was filthy. Dark stains were all over Fluttershy's costume with her eyes blacked out. There was a strange smell emitting from inside all of it. At first, it smelled like bile, and when her legs perfectly collapsed under her, they seemed squishy. Once again, I asked Miss Wilson if she was able to continue. Once again, she nodded, insisting that she would be able to perform her duties. I let her go on stage and called wardrobe for the spare Fluttershy costume we had in storage for emergencies to be brought out for her to change into after the first set. When a few of the children got up, the nerve to actually actually approached Fluttershy and posed for the picture Miss Wilson started to act even stranger. She would grab them and hold them in the possessive matter manner. She would then begin to act as she as if she was going to devour said child opening the costume mouth wide op- wide enough for her to potentially swallow said child at which point the child would begin crying and I would have to drag the child away from her back to her parents from her back to the her parents. At this time I need to point out that the smell from the Fluttershy costume had gotten even stronger and more noticeable. It now wasn't so much vile as it was the smell of rotten meat. It was quite strong with gas visibly reaching whenever she got close enough. In one incident, Fluttershy Wilson was clearly upset when a little girl refused to get close to her as she avoided Fluttershy and walked back to her parents. Fluttershy proceeded to follow her out from the stage and onto the floor, still with that strange walk and visibly tried to force the girl back to the stage. It was apparent from that the girl was frightened by Miss Wilson's actions. It was then I approached the actress, I placed my hand on her shoulder in an attempt to direct her back on the stage. When I did so, I noticed that the costume was squishy, 
It was as if there wasn't anything solid with the costume. Whenever it was that Miss Wilson put in her flashlight costume, it leaked through the fabric onto my hand as I continued to direct her to the stage. It was black, cold, and stung on contact. At this point, I radioed security and had to escort the other actors to the dressing room and to call 911 and a hazmat team to deal with a potentially dangerous substance that leaked from the costume. The longer I stayed with Fluttershy Wilson, I felt uneasy. It was as if a visual, visual purge rage began to emanate from the costume. She was beginning to terrify me. Even so, I stayed with her, keeping her separate from the other actors until the last one of them had entered the dressing room. When the last actor entered the dressing room, I asked if the security guard, Roger, hasted to keep an eye on Mills Wilson while I checked on the other actors. Upon entering the dressing room, I noticed two of the Beverly Center Mall maintenance workers trying to enter the door just to the mob room. Intentionally, I paid them no mind and asked the actors if they have noticed anything bizarre about Miss Wilson before they were to change into the costumes. They said that Miss Wilson was already in costume when they entered. It was at this point that the mall manager entered the dressing room to unlock the mob room. When he did, and the door opened, he screamed, Jesus! In alarm, which caught my attention, I ran into the mob room, and inside was Miss Wilson naked and bleeding from her right hand. Four of her fingernails missing, scratching her hand across the wall. In her own blood, she had written as follows. There are too many flutter They won't be brave. There are too many flutter They won't let me think. The flutter hate me. The flutter hate me. The flutter are laughing at me. After that, the words began. To read, see attached photos. It was then that we heard the scream coming from the hallway. It was next that his scream was followed by the scream of several of the actors who ran, had ran to the door to see what was going on and were now in a full, re- in full retreat from the doorway. I quickly made my way to the to the hall, where I gagged at both. What I saw and smelled lying in the hallway was the lower half of Hasted. It was almost as if his upper torso had melted away. Next to him lay the stained and discarded Fluttershy's costume. The putrid smell of rotten death quickly enveloped the hall and I ordered an evacuation. Once outside, we met with the paramedics who treated me for minor burns to my hand where the black goo had touched it. Miss Wilson, who was blabbling and currently was taken to the hospital for treatment and observation, caught of a report. We agree with Mr. Castle and Jenna's assumption that Miss Catherine Wilson had taken some legal drug and was intoxicated. We believe that it was a type of airborne psychotropic drug that it ultimately severely and everyone else in the mall to touch a much lesser degree causing hallucinations. We believe that Miss Wilson had arrived early and released said drug while in the mob closet and cha- then changed into her costume. By the time the others arrived on the scene, it is the toxin had permitted the air within the mall due to the Miss Wilson longer exposure to, re- to, to her reaction it was much more severe. How she wound up in the closet is questionable. We can assume that perhaps the others had a, simply not noticed her looking self, looking herself in it, and were beginning to suffer the effects of the drug. This would explain the lack of the purely mentioned body of security guard Roger Hasselt, and the lack of any black fluid at the scene. The suit, which did smell awful, was incinerated at the close of the event, potential investigation. Miss Catherine Wilson, who was committed at Rothman Memorial Hospital, Psychoth Wing, disappeared two weeks after the fact. 
federal and local authorities have been informed, and she appears on the no-fly list as we speak. We do not expect to hear from her again. However, we have told security to keep her eyes, their eyes open for her. At the, the, it is unknown at this time who is responsible for inflating all of those yellow balloons with the pink butterflies and rabbit designs in that room of Miss Wilson. Nor is it clear who left the Fluttershy doll with its eyes blacked in out in her room as well. We have to conduct an internal investigation into who might be responsible for such actions and speak with our manufacturers in China. These dolls aren't supposed to be in the market yet, and the fact that one of them showed up in a mental hospital is clearly in violation of our marketing and product policies. When found, the employee or employees should be terminated immediately to prevent further violations. And that's the story called Flutter Smooch. My final thoughts on the story? Well, I gotta say, the story's really... How do you say it? It's really interesting. But it's also talking about Fluttershy, which the voice actor uh, that obviously voices Fluttershy, which the Fluttershy here, and it never... Never mind. Anyways, uh, yeah, that was a story called uh, Flutter Smooch. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And, uh, yeah. What, what other stories you want me to read? I'll take any request. So, uh, yeah. It could be My Little Pony related. It could be Mario, Dragon Ball Z, Undertale. Pokemon, anything, Spongebob, any creepypasta you can suggest me, and I'll be reading it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next video, or possibly in another video.